hollow verbs hyphial. We've looked at the cal for hollow verbs in some detail. We've looked at the nifal. Now let's look at the hyphial. So here we have the hyphial of kum. And what we see here is that it divides into two groups uh, in a similar way that, or similar to how the nifal divides into two groups. Here it divides because the prefix vowel is a tsere, with a tsere for the perfect and the participle. So that's something to note, something we may not have anticipated. Um, the next thing, the other thing I want to say here is that we have a significant uh, second person switch. Okay? The NIF vowel, if you remember, had a second person switch with three parts. There were three vowels that changed. In the NIF vowel, we had comets reducing to shava. That was the proprietonic reduction of the prefix vowel. Comets to shava. We had uh, holom vav to shuruk, so theme vowel reduction. And we had the addition of the helping vowel. In the case of hifil, we just have two of those. The theme vowel stays. Hirikyud stays. But we have prefix vowel tsere reducing to Chataf uh, Patach, and we have the addition of the same helping vowel we did in Nifal, the Holom. So we end up with Hakimota. Hakimot, Hakimoti. Um, I had one teacher who called these the Japanese verbs because it sounded to him like Japanese. So if that helps as a way to remember this, uh, sort of a silly, silly way to think about it, but sometimes silly is a good way to, to recall things. Hakimoti the Japanese verbs. So, we have second person switch in the hyphial. We have tsere for the prefix vowel. What else do you want to say? So prefix vowel is tsere, second person switch. We don't have reduction of theme vowel actually. What we have is the prefix vowel reduces to the compound shava, that's tsere to khatav patach, and the holom vowel, where we get this holom helping vowel. Okay, what about the imperfect, or the prefix forms? Well, the first thing we see here is that we have the comets. That's just like what we had in the in the cal, right? Remember I said that the comets marks the hollow verbs, also geminates, we'll see it there. But when you see comets, think hollow verbs. In the nifal, we didn't have the comets here. Okay, so we don't have that helping us there. We had a comets here with the nun in the nifal. In the hifil, we're back to having a comets as a prefix vowel, just like the cal. Um, the other thing, of course, we know, or we, we, we see here, with all these prefix forms, and with, um, with some of the, the perfect forms as well, and the participle, is that you have your I, your I theme vowel. Remember, in the strong verbs, the key to the hifil, at least the hifil imperfect onwards here, is a prefix vowel plus I theme vowel, right? And um, so we have hitacute here. This hitacute is there, or some sort of IE vowel, like tsere or segol. This is reduced here, obviously. Um, but we have it here because it's a hyphial. It's this that, 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 we're ref that we are reflecting here. Remember, kum is actually a tu vav verb, not a tu yud. So this yud comes from the fact it's a hyphial, not from the not from the second radical. The result of that is that in the hyphial you cannot distinguish tu vav from tu yud, because because the, they all go tu yud because of this this uh, this i theme vowel that you have in the hyphial. So you can't distinguish between kum and seem. Or you can't distinguish between two vav and two yud in the hifil. And also, you cannot distinguish between the cal, two yud, and the hifil in the imperfect. Remember, the cal, two yud, looks just like this. You have the prefix vowel comets. You have yud, because it's a two yud. And so it looks just like this. You have yasim. In fact, I think I have one here. Here's the slide from the cal module we did. Yasim. You have comets and you have yud. This is cal now, remember? Okay, cal here. For the hyphial, yakim. The same vowels, okay? So you cannot distinguish those two. So for hyphials, you have the prefix vowel comets. This is in the prefix forms now. 
Just like the cow, we have the comets, so we have that nice marker there. It tells us we have probably a hollow or a geminet. Two notes, these are the things I just said. Two vav and two yud look the same in the hyphial. That's because the I, the I class theme vowel, obliterates the middle radical. So your vav and your yud all come down to yud because it's a hyphial. So you can't tell the difference. And the other thing is that the, the second yud, or the two yud imperfect, looks the same in the cow and the hyphial. So that's this here. Yasim in the cow looks just like, in terms of vowels, Yakim in the hyphial. So those are two things to uh, keep in mind. You get some, some ambiguity there. But they're not too bad. We have our comets here for the prefix vowel. We have our I class, so that'll, that will um, signify that we have a, a hyphial. And if I go back here, in the perfect, we have these Japanese-style verbs down here where we have a, uh, a two-part second-person switch.